What's up, children of the sun? This is your metaphysical advisor, Montre Bible, and I will be doing a reading for Gemini for the month of April 2019. Stay tuned. What's up, twinsies? What's up, Geminis? How are y'all doing? And you, and you, <laughs> the twins. Gemini's, y'all are busy, 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 and it's not going to slow down for the month of April, but try. Do your best. Uh, your ruling sign, Mercury, is going direct, so you are in full force. Uh, and in March, Mars moved into Gemini, so you're going to have a lot of energy. But it is a universal month seven, and month sevens are about rest. They're about taking a chill pill, and they are about meditating and planning your next move okay it's gonna be hard for everybody because when mercury goes direct it goes direct and it's just like boom and that's your ruling sign so you're gonna feel that energy happen to you but there's gonna be so much going on you almost have to force yourself to take a break okay you really do but you've probably been taking a break anyways with mercury retrograde so you were like uh now you're awake <laughs> So let's start it out, Mar Ugh, not March, April 5th, uh, we have a new moon. And the new moon is gonna be in Aries, of course, and it's gonna be in your 11th house. Your 11th house rules uh, what you wish for um, in your friend circles, your social circle. So uh, April 5th is a great time for you to manifest something. If you are spiritually inclined, Gemini, uh, because it is um, in your 11th house of wishes, and it's a new moon, and new moons are the perfect time to set your intention. Um, do that. Make that intention. You're going to have a lot of power to do that, especially with your planet going direct, okay? Also, there's going to be a chance to make new friends on April 5th because it's happening. It's a new moon in your social circle. You may start in a new group. You may go into a new group or maybe a, a new group of friends, or you may meet somebody new. So that'll be really good for you. April 10th, Jupiter goes retrograde in your seventh house. Okay, so this is about your relationships again. Um, Jupiter going retrograde in your seventh house means that you may have an opportunity to, uh, you may just, you may meet, the, have the best opportunities or the best luck with uh, some old friends, some old relationships, maybe an ex. You may get another chance with an ex uh, with Jupiter. Uh, going retrograde in your old in your seventh house and it's a good chance that that actually is going to work out because Jupiter is going to bring abundance and luck so if you have an opportunity with the X during that time on April 10th and this is going to be a long transit this is all the way into the summer and to August so it's a slow moving transit it's not like Mercury retrograde um, and it's not crazy and chaotic um, you just don't random X's pop it up when Mercury ret goes retrograde and uh, when Jupiter does it, this is the best possible person that you could be uh, meeting. Uh, but it'll be an old opportunity. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a relationship. It could be an old acquaintance. It could be an old friend. And you're like, man, I haven't seen you in a long time. And this friend brings you an opportunity that's going to help you. That's going to give you uh, the chance to go to the next level. So I don't want to quite always make it romantic because Jupiter... It's not really about the romance. It's a, Jupiter is about the opportunity. This is a chance to do something bigger in your life, to go to the next level. So when it's retrograde, it's more so um, old friends, old acquaintances, and because it's in your seventh house, okay? April 17th, Mercury goes direct in your 11th house. Once again, your 11th house is your social circle, your friends. Uh, you're going to be having a lot of communication with friends during the month of April. Also, this, it's because it's in Aries, watch out for arguments in debates with uh, friends and people in your social circle because of Mercury in the 11th house. Then it's in Aries. Okay, but you're gonna, because you're Mr. Jibber Jabber uh, or Miss Jibber Jabber, you're gonna be talking and socializing and you may get some ideas from your friends. You may get ideas of, of a social thing to do. You may want to throw a social event uh, during that time. Let's talk about the full moon. April 19th, we have a full moon. This is Easter weekend. This is, um, you know, we're having Passover, uh, Easter, and a lot of little holidays. 
Uh, this is the second full moon in Libra. And this is happening in your fifth house. So romance is going to be lit up during the full moon. You may feel like a little bit more loving. Um, with so much energy going on in your 11th house, you may have a, um, a friend that you're interested in during the full moon. You start seeing them in a new way. If, I want you to think back in March and see if something happened in March where you were getting close to a friend and you didn't really think anything of it. Or maybe you were feeling romantic last month and nothing happened. Well, this month you have a second chance because this is the second uh, full moon in Libra. You're going to have a second chance at having this relationship. Libra is about relationships, but it's also about balance and relationships and stuff. And this is your fifth house, okay? So take advantage of whatever opportunity presents itself. If this is a chance at love, go for it. If you already have a romantic relationship with someone, it's going to get intensified during this full moon. April 20th, the sun moves into your 12th house of spirituality. This is a good time to meditate. Like I said, it's a good time to rest. Uh, if you decide you want to just go to sleep <laughs> all the time, uh, not a great time to be, to be going out and doing a whole bunch of stuff, you know. Uh, Venus moves into your 11th house as well. Once again, your social circle, Venus is about love. Um, either you you're this could very possibly be somebody that you're romantically interested interested in that is a friend okay so here's a challenge april 24th and april 30th this is a very long transit that's going to be happening all summer long into august october um pluto and saturn they're in your eighth house of sexuality and they're going retrograde so pluto is trying to transform trying to transform your intimacy, your intimacy levels. And Gemini, you may be a little uncomfortable with deep, deep intimacy. That may be the problem. Geminis are very much in their head about stuff. And sometimes it's hard to get out of your head and be very deeply sexually intimate with somebody. Pluto's trying to transform some things about your sexuality, how you relate to somebody, and also your finances. So if there are some Geminis that may be very bad at finances, you know? And then there are some Geminis that may don't have that quite sexual partner that they want yet. Or you have a partner, but they're not quite, you, that sex life is not quite working yet. Pluto is about to transform that. He's got to break it down and transform it first, though. Saturn, when Saturn goes retrograde, there are some old lessons that you still haven't learned uh, that you have to learn it. And Saturn said, you know exactly what you need to learn when it, when it, regards to intimacy and deepness and that deep level intimacy not just sex deep deep intimacy saturn is going to make you go through these lessons all summer long until you learn it and realize there are some things that you just need to get rid of some ideas you need to get rid of some 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 way that you are trying to come across to get to get what you want sexually or to get what you want financially from other people because the eighth house is not just what you're getting by yourself it's what you're getting with somebody else okay what you're getting with somebody else uh. so mostly that's has to do with sex and because there's a lot of energy going on in that fifth house in that eleventh house I really think that you're gonna meet a friend that um, develops into a, a deeper sexual relationship and it may move into the summer and that person starts getting y'all start getting a little bit more deeper and it may get uncomfortable you may have some uncomfortable moments but if you want it to last there are going to be some sacrifices that you're going to have to make let's go to the tarot and see what that has to say oh let me stand up real quick all right all right so oh, excuse me we're going to do a reading for Gemini for the month of April 2019 Gemini the so month of April 2019 Gemini first card the five of swords Gemini you get the five of swords is the first card out and this is about arguments or trying to uh, win arguments and you may be really good at intellectual debating, but you have to watch out for uh, winning the battle but losing the war, okay? Because it may be pushing people away. And you may be pushing people away 
because you are insistent about winning in an intellectual uh, battle with somebody, you know? Sometimes people are wrong, yes, but maybe you don't need to communicate that all the time. This is all about how you communicate with people. We get the Three of Swords. Once again, this is a very mental sign. It's about heartbreak. It's about being way too much. <laughs> It is also, it's not only is it about heartbreak, it's also about, it could be about infidelity, it could be about, because there's three swords, um, maybe somebody, maybe this is a past relationship that you're getting back into. Jupiter is going retrograde, and I already said that it's going retrograde in your seventh house. Uh, um, so you may have a, a second chance with someone that broke your heart, or you broke their heart. Uh, arguments happened, Jupiter's going retrograde in that house. And um, you guys are friends now, but it may develop into something else. And then we get the Knight of Wands reversed. This is something you got to work on. It's about moving too fast, um, being on the defense, you know, um, being sexual, but in a bad way. Okay, so you have to watch that because if you want something to develop with this, if you want something to develop with this relationship, you have to go on the deeper level. Don't, don't be on the surface level of sexuality because you're just going to get your heart broken again. Okay, and don't battle it out. Don't argue with this person. Um... I'm thinking that that'll just push that person away. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Three of Pentacles. It's definitely something you're going to have to work on. And it's not something you work on by yourself. If this relationship is going to work, this person that's coming back into your life, this person that you, you guys have great chemistry, but feelings were hurt. You guys have to collaborate together and work on it. You may need to go get some some relationship therapy or talk to somebody else. Both of y'all together, talk to somebody else and see if you can work your relationship out. If it's like a marriage or something like that, yeah, go to some counseling and see what's up. But also just you have to you both have to agree to work on it. It has to be agreement. It can't be just one-sided and be like, hey, uh, I'm going to work on this relationship. No, you both have to decide that, yeah, we're going to work on this. Say, so do you want to ask them, do you want to work on this? Do you really want to work on this? Then I'm willing if you are. And that's going to be the summer. Let's see what the animal oracles have to say for Gemini, April. Wow, there's another person who got this. Moth spirit, surrender now. And the moth spirit sacrifices itself to go toward the light. Okay? The moth is drawn toward the light. So the spirit is light. There is something you are going to have to sacrifice in yourself. Okay? The moth spirit is not the prettiest. It looks like it, it pretends to be, looks like it's a butterfly, but it's not. <laughs> the moth is drawn to the flame. The flame, the light will transform you. This, this is the only thing that the moth can do. You need to go toward the light and sacrifice something of yourself. Get into your spirituality. And this is what I'm talking about the seven month. Is, is about, it's about getting deep with yourself and realizing, okay, pray, meditate, figure it out. You want this relationship to work? The moth spirit says surrender to it. Surrender to the spirit. Surrender to love and say okay something about me has to die if i'm going to work this out with this person and i can't tell you that yeah, that's personal and we do personal reading that's on you but um you're gonna have to sacrifice something you're gonna walk into that light and it's gonna burn it's gonna hurt but that's okay if that person is worth it okay so gemini that was a pretty deep reading um if it resonates with you, please like this video, um, subscribe, leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on with you guys.
Remember, you're in control of your reality. Make something happen, because if you don't do it, then who will? Talk to you later.